Hey everyone, welcome back. We have a special guest that's just deciding to come hang out today. Oh, look at her. Today we're talking about tattoos in film and TV. So we're gonna go over what's real and what's not real from what you see on screen. So most of the time when you do see tattoos in film or TV, those tattoos are fake. And there's many reasons for that, but one of the most prominent reasons is that there's a possibility for copyright infringement of tattoos done by tattoo artists who technically may have rights to the artwork. So the whole issue of who owns a tattoo's copyright is a really complicated issue, and it's one that's been pretty heavily debated over the past few years. So Timothy L. DeGeorge is a lawyer who deals with a lot of advertising and media-related law. Earlier this year, he wrote this article on the topic of tattoo copyright. He discusses that it's a really complicated issue because under the U.S. Copyright Act, the creator of the artwork has all rights to their own original creation. Under this act, the artist would have the right to make copies, sell, and display their work. Now, on the other hand, every individual has personality rights. Personality rights are the rights of an individual to control the commercial use of one's identity. So this is such as your name, your image, and your likeness. So when actors are in films or TV, essentially their public image is being sold and bought by consumers who watch that. So now if an actor has a tattoo, that tattoo is inherently a part of the actor's public image. So you can see that there's kind of a disconnect here between who owns that artwork and who has the rights to say what this person can or can't do with their own body. The laws in this case clearly conflict as well, and there's been no amendments to those laws to include anything about tattooing as of yet, so we're still pretty much in that gray area of being unsure. However, there have been a few court cases of tattoo copyright infringement in film and TV that we can look towards for somewhat of an answer. The most famous instance of this is the court case against the Mike Tyson tattoo that was featured in the Hangover 2 film. The tattoo artist S. Victor Whitmill, who designed and tattooed Mike Tyson's famous face tattoo, sued Warner Brothers in 2011 because they featured the tattoo on one of the main characters' film without buying the rights to their image or asking the artist. Warner Brothers eventually settled with Whitmill for an undisclosed amount and the film was able to continue with the tattoo scene in it. I hope Whitmill got a lot of money for that. So this court case is a little bit different from what we talked about in the beginning because it wasn't suing over the actor's actual tattoo. And Mike Tyson has been in a bunch of movies where this tattoo artist has not sued the production companies for. But you can see that he definitely had a leg to stand on in this case because the tattoo was essentially copied and put on one of the main characters. So whether or not lawsuits against the actor's individual tattoos would be viable or not, you can see that there's enough gray area here and potential lawsuits for production companies that they tend to opt out of using an actor's tattoos that they might already have on their body. What's interesting is that you don't always have to cover up an actor's tattoos with makeup you can opt for putting another tattoo on top of the design to obscure it enough that it's different and you're not risking any legal action. For example, in Aquaman, Jason Momoa's arm and chest tattoos were covered with a scale-like design to obstruct the tattoo underneath and add some more visual elements to the character. Not that there isn't already enough visual interest on Jason Momoa, there's this really interesting article called Movie Tattoos that was written by Mike Johnson. In the article, Mike is quoted to say, In the early days of film, tattoos were applied with stage makeup and set like you would normal makeup. These tattoos would be prone to smudging and running. In the 70s, an alcohol-based skin paint was invented and it was applied laboriously by hand. The alcohol-based tattoo had to be touched up every day and due to the process, it could take multiple artists hours and hours to apply. Mike goes on to say that in the 90s, there was a temporary tattoo that was like one of those peel and stick transfer tattoos that was developed that would be able to stay on the actor a lot longer, as well as it was sweat and waterproof. You just have like a sheet of the tattoo that's on transferable paper and you stick it to the body, wet it, and then peel it off. So you can imagine that's a lot faster than having 
makeup artists literally paint tattoos onto actors every day. So for example, apparently the tattoos on George Clooney in the film From Dusk Till Dawn were painted onto him. So when I first thought about doing this topic, I assumed that production companies nowadays were using more of like an ink box type tattoo that you can put on and then it would stay on the body for at least a few weeks. But that seems to not be the case. And I don't know if this is due to the fact that it's so new or the price might be really high, I'm not sure. But I did find out that you can buy the temporary ink that Inkbox uses and you can just freehand some designs if you want. So that's pretty cool. Maybe the reason production companies don't use these type of fading tattoo inks is because it does fade and depending on when you're filming, you might have a tattoo that's significantly more faded towards the end of a week. So I can see why they might opt for the other option. So like I said, the popular option seems to be those peel and stick transferable tattoos that you might have gotten in a little gumball machine when you were a kid. So Samantha Sasso interviewed Christian Tinsley about fake tattoos in film for this article in Refinery29. Christian Tinsley is a makeup artist and character designer who owns Tinsley Studio. Christian Tinsley seems to have played a big part in how temporary tattoos in film are put on today. He's quoted to say, when I did the film Pearl Harbor, most of the work we were doing was a lot of wounds. In an effort to create continuity between the actor's wounds, I would create these cuts that were essentially tattoo transfers. That started this wave in the industry of people who want to purchase cuts and bruises from me for their films. Eventually, I started getting asked to do regular tattoos for projects too. So this type of transfer tattoo method is essentially the best practice for applying tattoos in film and TV now. And I've seen a few different reports on how long they last. I've seen some that say just one day, some that say a week, but you can imagine if you're filming for a long period of time, these tattoos will need to be reapplied pretty often. So if you take those Aquaman tattoos, for example, you can imagine the huge amount of precision that went into reapplying the temporary tattoos on Jason Momoa every time that they had to, because they had to make it look like these tattoos were exactly the same throughout the entire film. There's another company called Tattooed Now, and they do a lot of tattoos in the same way. You can also buy tattoos directly from their website. And they have a lot of examples of their tattoos in films, which is pretty cool. They did these tattoos on Zaltan Ibrahimovic for 805 million names, which I believe is a promotional video. These ones look really real. They also did this tattoo on Channing Tatum in Jupiter Ascending. So this is all pretty interesting to me. I was definitely surprised that they did do this peel and stick method because in my experience when I've done those, they look so fake when they're on you. It's like super shiny. But there are a bunch of tips and tricks that makeup artists use to make those tattoos blend really well into the skin and look like they're real. So for example, there's this video called How to Make and Apply Fake Tattoos by Special Effects Pros. This is from the YouTube channel Synapse FX. This video is really great. They show you how to even print out your own tattoo designs if you want to do it in-house. And they show you how to make tattoos blend more into the skin. So what they do is they put the transfer tattoo on and then they cover it with a translucent powder. And then they actually repeat the process of putting their glue solution on top of the tattoo again and then putting more powder on top of that. And the end result actually does end up looking like something that may have just been tattooed. But they also say in the video that you can print out something that's more gray or blue instead of pure black, because when you do pure black, it does look very fresh. But if you wanna do more of an age tattoo, you can do more of a grayish bluish hue to the actual image that you're printing out. That's all I have for you guys today. Next time you're watching a movie or a TV show and you see tattoos in it, now you will know everything that went into getting that there. Definitely let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think that this is where we're gonna be with fake tattoos in films for a while? I personally think that something might come up that's a little bit better than the peel and stick method, but it seems to be working really well so far. So if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. If you have, leave me this emoji in the comments down below so that I know that you are a real one. Bye guys.